So we have this. You can think of it as like data that we we've, we've uh, kept track of. Uh, we we were talking about yesterday was this days. We we're thinking of this as days. Oh. <laughs> to this morning, yeah. Yesterday, but in this class yesterday, I think we were doing minutes oh. and apples. Uh, minutes and apples. Now, so we were talking about it in terms of like minutes that went by and apples that we picked, but what would be strange about this data if we were thinking about it as apples that we picked? Mm -hmm. We'd be going down. We'd be blowing the apples, apples back on the tree. Uh, okay, so. Okay, but still, even though. Even that way, if we think of it as the number of apples that we've eaten, well, we can, we're eating fewer apples every time. So maybe like there's, <coughs> apples seems too big. So maybe let's think, uh, I mean, what could we eat several of in just a few minutes? M&M's. Chips. M&M's. Chips. Bigger than an M&M. It seems like Chips. kind of a little bit slower. Chips. Chips are bigger than M&M. You can eat your bag. Okay. You need a lot at one time. Okay, let's try chips. I so think that that will, it takes a little bit of time to eat a chip. And let's see if that makes sense here. Slowly eating chips during a very suspense. Or you never see like this yes. and you can't hear the teeth. That's it's not good. I show my face like, full of chips. So you let them sit there and get a little soft. Like yeah. 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 Okay. We've got... A believable wow, story. Let's all calm down. <laughs> all right, so this is maybe uh, minutes and chips. Not that we've eaten. How do we think of this as? Chips left in the bag. Chips left in the bag. Got 12 left, got four left. OK? Because the number has to go down, it has to decrease, so it's got to make sense. Really, we don't have to make up a story, but it is helpful when we're thinking about these things. All right, so I want to figure out, maybe let's just to start out with on this one, let's think about, uh, this is going to get silly kind of fast, but let's, let's think about minute nine, all right? To figure out how many chips are left in the bag at minute nine, we kind of have to know, what do we have to know? How many is left? Like three, three in there. Okay, but what do we have to know about like the way we're eating the chips. How fast we're eating How fast we're eating the chips. How fast is it happening? Okay, we're talking about the rate of change. If we were looking at a graph, we're talking about the slope. We're trying to figure out how fast is this thing happening. Okay. Well, how fast is it happening? Can someone help me figure that out? Help us all figure that out? Eight. How fast is this happening? Eight. You said eight. eight. What eight? What's eight? Eight. <laughs> Where, so we're going what's 12? What, why did you look at this and say 8? Oh, because 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay, so when I go from minute 3 to minute 7, I go from having 12 chips in the bag to having 4 chips in the bag. So it goes down by 8. Right? If I subtract 8, so I, what did I do <coughs> in between minute 3 to minute 7? Eight you ate 8 chips. Eight, eight chips. Okay, is that, I mean, is that really, if I just told you I ate eight chips, would you say, ooh, that's fast? And depending on how much time it's. Right, did this, did this take a lifetime, or did I do this in three seconds? How long did it take me to eat these eight chips? How long did it take, according to this data? Seven. Minutes. Four minutes. Four, right? From minute three to minute four, or minute seven, Yeah. Four minutes. Four minutes. Are we writing this down? Yes. You're writing this down as much as you're talking. So we ate these eight chips. The chips have gone down by eight in four minutes. Now we can kind of assess, like, is this fast? Is this slow? It's average speed. It's kind of slow. I like Belly's ex uh, explanation. You're watching TV. They're crunchy. You don't want to make it too loud. So you chew real slowly so that you can hear the TV. Okay, maybe that's why we're chewing them so slowly. So we want to, in this example, this something nice happens when we try to figure out how fast we're eating the chips. Who can tell me how fast we're eating the chips? Eight or four minutes. Eight 
per four minutes. Eight per four minutes. So, like, what's the change in the chips? Well, the chips are going down, right? Yeah. So it's a change of negative eight every four minutes. Negative eight chips every four negative minutes. Two. What the hell? Yeah. Negative two? Negative two. Negative two chips? How often? Every minute. All right, so negative two chips a minute. That's how many, that's how fast the bag, the, the, the number of chips in the bag is changing. It's changing negative, it's going down. What's that? You eat them and they're gone. How do we get negative? Here's the thing we have to keep in mind. We're telling ourselves stories to help us understand these numbers. But the thing about numbers is they can be funny. They can be negative. Why are these chips? Because we said so. We just made it up. What, what kind? Burritos. Burritos. <laughs> it's happening. Hey, what? Crossing over from the brief comment to the full-blown discussion that takes forever. Okay. We have to come back from it. Good. Thank you. Uh, so we said it was chips. It didn't have to be chips. We made it up. How do we have negative chips? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Well, those are how many we ate, though, right? Air. It's air chips. So if this ever went to negative chips, we're trying to say that's how many chips are in the bag. Oh. But you don't, you're not going to have negative chips in the back. Sure. Well, you can owe chips to somebody else. You got oh, okay. yeah. That's a good way to think of negatives. Is it's something that you owe to someone. All right, now we're crossing over in full blown discussion mode. Yes, there are lots of ways we can make sense of negative chips. The thing we just have to like come to terms with is this number is going to become negative at some point. At some point it's going to go negative, and we just have to be okay with it. Just going to have to live with it. Um, we, they're only, it's only representing chips because we said so. Yeah. We can just ignore chips and minutes. Okay. And it's just the, the y is changing this much, and the x is changing this much. The y is changing this much, and the x is changing this much. Whatever y represents, whatever x represents. Uh, it's, it's up to us. We'll, we'll call it chips just so we have something to reference. And minutes so we have something to reference. But remember, when it goes negative, we're just going to have to accept, like, okay, negative chips, whatever that means. So, let's talk about minute nine. How many chips are left in the bag in minute nine, and how did you figure that out? Hunter? Um, uh, like that, the zero. Okay, so let me just make some room for zero and whatever goes with zero. 18, so um, 18 times, you know. Wait, you got 18? Just tell me how you know that. You go back two. You go back two? Like that's not a full explanation. You're going back to zero minutes, right? And so how do you know that that means that you're going to have, like you would have 18 chips at that time? Since you add two, then you go back to two. Okay, and so how many times do we have to go back to? Three. Three times. We're at minute three, we're going back to minute one. We wanna, we're going to have to go back two chips a minute, right? Add two chips a minute. Two chips a minute at three minutes is six chips. So yeah, we're up to 18 chips. What does that mean? Zero minutes and 18 chips? <laughs> Tell me what that means about this is my situation, sitting down to watch TV, eating chips. The bag's eight. full. You didn't eat. Well, there, were 18 you, there was 18 chips. If a full bag of chips has 18 chips, I think maybe you should buy different chips. 18 <laughs> chips. Maybe a tiny bag. Oh, a little bag. That's yeah. The story. There's 18 chips and you before you started eating. eating. Okay, so at the moment you sat down, you hadn't eaten anything. Like once you, like at the moment that you grabbed the first chip, there's 18 chips at minute zero. Like no time has passed. Cool. And then like you could give four chips away to somebody. Are you trying to explain those negative chips still? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Okay. 
Let's go back to Hunter, though. Hunter was telling us how to figure out how many uh, we, chips we have at minute nine. Right? Keep going. Okay, so, so 18. Nine times negative two plus. Like, mm -hmm. Make sure you. That's what you want to do. Yeah, like nine times negative two. Let's all pay attention, please. Negative two plus eighteen. Okay. What are you guys think about that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Wait, nine times what? No, I'm confused. No, it's okay, not. so let's talk about it. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how many chips there are at minute nine. Oh, I did it correct. Yeah. So why would why would Hunter multiply nine by negative two? Because it's six nine. Um, nine. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Zero. To get from minute from zero, zero to minute nine, it takes nine minutes. Yeah. Is zero. Huh? Well, that's yeah. This would add to zero. Yeah. yeah. So it takes nine minutes. Yeah. Why, why are we multiplying by negative two? Because negative two is how many you start with? No, we started with. You started with 18. It's nine minutes to get to minute nine. We start with minute zero. Oh, because that's how many chips you have in your name. Because so that's how many chips that get out of the bag right, every minute. Right? Every minute, how many chips disappear from the bag? Two. Two. How many minutes is this happening for? Nine. Nine, nine minutes. So nine times negative two, that's how many get you know, taken from the bag. How many is that? Negative six. A minute. It's just so I think I did something. Negative 18 <laughs> plus 18. That just so happens to be zero. What does that mean about minute yeah. nine? Zero. zero chips. Zero, zero chips. We've eaten all the chips. Yeah. Okay, wait. So I thought we were only using the part. Yeah, you said we're only using the part. Okay. Zero. Yes, I did want you to write the formula, but. Hunter, stop talking. But I did want to have you just think about minute nine. So, to write the formula for any minute in the future, any minute at all, minute one, minute two, minute nine, minute 20, even though that would be negative, clearly it would be negative. We're gonna write this formula. So, it starts with Y, where Y represents the number of Chips, right? Number of chips. So the number of chips is equal to what? How's this formula going to look? Nine plus Nine. 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 Okay, I think we need a little more guidance than uh, than we've done. Okay, so to figure out how many chips are in the bag. Let's start with how many we have to start with. How many how many chips were there to start with? 18. 18 chips. So we should probably start there, right? Good starting 18. place. 18. Plus uh, negative two. Okay, so minus two. So we're gonna take away two. Times x. Why times x? So starting at minute zero. So we don't need to subtract. So yeah, we don't need like x minus one or x minus yeah. two. It just takes, if we want to go to minute nine, it takes nine minutes. If we want to go to minute three, it takes three minutes. If we want to go to minute x, it takes x minutes. It takes the same amount of minutes to get to minute x. Jaden. Shh. Just ask me a question. Jaden and Hunter. Question. Right here. Question. Okay. <laughs> you have a question. You've asked your question. To me. Rather than distracting other people around you. So you start with 18 chips or whatever it might be. You subtract 
two chips per what? <coughs> per minute times? <coughs> times x what? Yeah. Minutes. So negative two chips per minute times x minutes is, well, that's going to tell me how many chips I have left the bag. I take that number from 18. But the thing about the next problem is it doesn't work out as nicely as this did. This works out so nicely that exactly two chips every one minute. It's, it's easy to think about when a whole number of something happens every one minute, or one hour, or one day, or, or whatever. Okay? But if you were to just eat some chips, do you think you would eat them at an exact steady rate of two chips a minute? No. Some chips are smaller, some chips are bigger. Maybe commercials on, so you eat them faster because you don't care about listening to the commercials. So it goes up and down. But according to this data, like this is just kind of the average. On average, we're eating to a minute. Right? And sometimes that average does not come out to a whole number. Okay, we're graduating up to like more realistic situations. So now this one gives us the, you know, what happens at 47, and then also write the formula. Put that over here. Okay, on this one together. Uh, again, we can make up a story however we like. Uh, minutes and chips, if we want. Uh, hours and dollars, days and boxes of Girl Scout cookies, like whatever you want it to be, it doesn't really matter. Would you guys like to like assign some meanings to these variables, or do you want to just no, no, no. no. Okay. Okay. That would be good. Just go. just All right, alone. Well, to figure out what's happening at 47, x is 47. We probably need to know how fast all this is changing, right? Like for <laughs> if y changes this much and x changes this much, if we follow that pattern up to x is 47, then where will y be then? That's what we're trying to figure out. So we gotta figure out how fast it's Happening. How do we figure out how fast all that's happening? How fast is y changing versus x? Kelly? You take the jump from 5 to 13 in yeah. 975, and, it's, and then you subtract those two numbers from each other. Okay, so to figure out how big the jump is, we can just y say minus x. Thir wait, subtract y from y minus x? Yeah, well, never mind. What are you doing? Hey, 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 yeah, I know. So, okay, so to figure out how big this jump is, please, Mark, I don't know what we're gaining from talking over me. To figure out how big this jump is, we can count it. If it was a really big gap, though, we wouldn't want to do that. We would just take 13 minus 5, and that would tell us that the jump is From 9 to 75, how big a jump is that? Well, 75 minus 9 tells us it's 66. Yeah, that's what I did. So we want to get that ratio of like this many x's means this much change in y. So like, let's just talk about it for a second. I could just keep following that pattern, right? Go up by 8. Where would that put me? 21. 21. Go up by another 66. Some number. I think 141. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So just go up by another 8 and go up by another 66. I can keep doing that. Go up by 8, go up by 66, up by 8, up by 66. But, you know, what about all that all the values in between? And and what if X was like 13.94, then what would y be? So we need to figure out a way to, to get that change smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, 
Well, notice that uh, like I could go half as much as both of these, right? Like I can go up by four, getting me to 25. If I went up by four, then how much would I have to go up on the Y? 33, 174. Right? That's the same? Yeah. No. Just the same. Uh, I could I could cut it in half again. I could go up by two and up by how much would that be? Um, What's half of thirty-three? So bored. Six and a half. If you're so bored, take off. Who would like just go? Back. What? Go to the office. I'm fine. Okay. Sixteen point five. So if x were to change by two and go up to twenty-seven, then the y would have to go up by sixteen point five, and that would be at progress if people weren't interrupting with this is so boring and they just write the formula. Maybe not everybody is ready to just snap and have a formula. But let's be considerate of people around us. Stop interrupting with needless comments. Okay, so all of these have the same ratio. Okay? What's the rate of change of y to x? y changes 66, and x changes 8, which is the same as y changing 33, and x changing 4, which is the same as y changing 16.5, and, y, and uh, x changing 2, or y changing how much? For every 1x? Eight point two five. Eight point two five. Okay. Eight point two five y's for every one x. Okay. And you know, that'll work for however many changes in x you want to go. If you want to change by three x's, then you need to change by three times eight point two five. And that works out to be. So uh, Let's write this formula by maybe backing up again to minute zero, or whatever x represents being zero. So who can, who can help me figure out what would be right here if we backed up to x is zero? How much does x change if we go back from minute, go well, back from five to zero? Negative fifteen. Just talking about x here. Uh, well, how much does x five. change? Five. It changes five. We go back five to get to zero. Okay. Go back five. How much then would y change right. for every one x? How much does y change? 8.25, right? Every, every time x changes by 8, y changes by 66. Every time x changes by 4, y changes by 33. Every time x changes by 1, y changes by 8.25. So how much change is that if we're going to back up to 0 from 5? Eight. 8.25 times what? times five. Okay. So we take, start at nine, <coughs> and subtract 8.25 times five. Yeah. Grab a calculator. Yeah. 1.125. 
32 5. What do you have? 32.25. Wait. 8.25. You said 32.25. 8.25 times 5. Yep. Uh, my phone said 41.25. Yeah, that's just that number. Did you subtract it from nine, though? Because we. 32.25. What did you do? Negative. Negative 32.25. Negative 32.25. So. We back up to x is zero. That means that y would have had to start at negative 32.25. Negative 32.25. So this is like, like 8.25 for one is like making eight dollars and twenty-five cents every one hour. Okay. And if this were a, a day at work, it'd be like you started off work with. Negative thirty-two point two five dollars. So if you're, if you're, you owe somebody. Maybe you owe the place where you work. Where you work at like a clothing store, and you have bought some things on credit, and they allow you to do that and say, all right, with, you know, you'll work and it'll just come out of your paycheck. Right? And so you work for a while and get up into the positive number of dollars. That's it. So that's how we can. Start out with negative. There we are at the initial value. At x is zero, y is negative 32.25. Zero hours of working, I have negative 32.25 dollars. Right? Now we're going to write a formula to calculate what y will be for any given x, or in terms of dollars and hours, how many dollars I'll have after x hours of working. So how much do we start with? How much money do we start with? Negative 32.25. So we got to start there and go up from there, right? Add on money to that amount. Plus 8.25. Okay. You guys seem really keen on writing these. It's like, I don't know, it's so boring and let's write this formula. So let's just do it. You do it for me. Uh, let's say this is seven. This is 18. Now, 12, 64. Okay. Based on that, I'd be a point. 